Schmidt triggers. We're going to start off looking at four op amp circuits. If we look at these two circuits here, so this one is the, it's got negative feedback, the outputs fed into the inverting inputs, and the same here. If we've got negative feedback, then we've got an amplifier circuit. Looking at these, we've got the outputs fed into the non inverting inputs, which means we've got positive feedback, which means it's a Schmidt trigger. So negative feedback means amplifier, positive feedback means Schmidt trigger. So that's the first thing to look at. Then we look at where the input goes. The input goes into the inverting input, which means it's an inverting amplifier. And in this case, it goes into the non-inverting input, non-inverting amplifier. Input goes into the non-inverting input, non-inverting Schmidt. Input goes to the inverting input, inverting Schmidt. There's a couple of rules here. With negative feedback, the op-amps input is going to be equal. That's what the negative feedback does. With positive feedback, the V out is going to change when the op-amps inputs cross. So when the voltage at this point crosses either side of the volt, that's what's going to cause V out to change. So we're going to look at three circuits in detail now. First one's the non-inverting Schmidt trigger. I'll put some values in here so we can do some calculations. So the rule, V out is going to change when the op-amps inputs cross. In other words, when the voltage at this point crosses 0 volts. We're going to look at how many volts we need at this point in order for this to be 0 volts so that the output will change. So first of all, let's assume that we've got 30 plus 13 volts at V out, and we've got 0 volts at this point here. So we've got 13 volts across RF, so we can work out the current going through RF. So V over R, 13 volts across it, 100K, we get this current. All of the current is going to go through this resistor. Uh, the op-amp has got infinite input impedance, so no current goes in here. So all this current will go through this resistor, uh, and we can work out how many volts we've got across it using vehicles IR. And it turns out we've got 2.6 volts across this resistor. Then we can work out how many volts we've got here at V in. So we've got 0 volts here, and we're going to lose 2.6 volts across it in this case. So we get minus 2.6 volts here. Uh, little little check of this one. This is going to be positive. We go down to naught and we keep going. This is going to be negative. More generally, uh, this is a formula for the switching voltage. It's 13 volts, which is the output of the op amp, divided by RF to get the current going through RF and multiply it by R in to get the voltage. Looking at the graph up here, we can see that when uh, V out is positive, when V in is positive, uh, this is the non inverting shape. And when we reduce V in, when we reach the switching voltage, V out is going to drop very rapidly down to minus 13 volts, and it will stay there. And it will stay there if we increase V in until we reach the positive switching voltage, at which point it rapidly switches to be plus 13 volts. Reverting Schmidt trigger, again, I've given some values here so we can work on. The uh, same rule applies when the op amps inputs cross, that's when V out is going to change. So in this case, it's when V in is equal to Vx, it's going to be the point at which it will switch. If we've got 13 volts here, we can work out, first of all, the current going through these two resistors here. So we've got 50k in total between 13 volts and 0 volts. So we're going to end up with 2.6 times 10 to the minus 4 amps. Then we can work out how many volts we've got across Rd, using vehicles IR. Again, all of the current is going to go through this resistor. So we multiply the current by the 10k and we end up with 2.6 volts. It's not always going to be 2.6 volts, it's just the values that I've chosen for these examples. And generally, to calculate the switching voltage, we've got 13 volts, which is the output of the op-amp, divided by the total resistance to get the current, and then multiplied by RD to get the voltage at X. Looking at the graph, V out is going to be positive when V in is negative. This is the inverting part of the um, other characteristic. And when we reach the positive switching voltage, that's when the output is going to rapidly uh, drop down to minus 13 volts, and it will stay there. If we reduce V in, uh, it's going to stay at minus 13 volts until we reach the negative switching voltage, at which point the output suddenly switches to plus 13 volts. And we can make uh, an inverting Schmidt from a logic gate. So I've got a NOT gate here. And the characteristic of this is when the voltage here is less than 2.5 volts, the output is 5 volts. And when that's greater than 2.5 volts, the output is going to be 0 volts. I've got a couple of resistors here, so we can do some calculations. So V out is going to change in this case when Vx crosses 2.5 volts as given in the table. Let's say we've got 5 volts here, 
and it's we want to find out how many volts will make it be out to change so we're going to assume that we've got 2.5 volts at x we can work out the current through this uh, resistor so we've got 5 volts at one end 2.5 volts at the other end so it's going to be this current we can then work out because all this current is going to go through this resistor we can work out how many volts across are in using vehicles IR and that's going to be 0.5 volts across this one so we've got 5 volts here 2.5 volts here and then we lose another 0.5 volts so it means that V in is going to be 2 volts to make this change likewise what we could do is we could work out okay we've got 0 volts here uh, we can work out the current of uh, 2.5 volts here and it's going to come out as the same current so we're going to have 0.5 volts lost across here which means this will be 3 volts to make this 2.5 volts uh, when that's not volts and that will cause it to change and the formula for this one uh, a bit more complicated but we've got 2.5 volts which is the switching threshold plus or minus the 2.5 volts we're going to get across RF when it's ready to be switched multiplied by uh, the resistor here divided by this here so uh, 2.5 volts over RF gives us the current multiplied by R in uh, gives us the voltage across this resistor